From his back garden near Huddersfield, Robert Harrison tests out Icarus II, the homemade contraption capable of delivering his dream. That is to record images such as these. From the edge of space on a previous mission to reach altitudes that no gadget like it has ever reached before. And to record the kind of images usually associated with multi-million pound technology. In fact, it cost just a couple of hundred quid to bring back pictures that amazed NASA and astounded Robert himself. I had no idea I was going to get back the sort of images that I did. I remember retrieving the camera back. I thought from the, from, it landed about 500 metres from the coast, which is, which is great, because if it landed in the sea, it would have been game over. Um, got the camera back. I couldn't look at the picture straight away, which was a bit frustrating. So I went to the local pub, sat down in the pub, fired up my laptop, put the SD card in, and I slowly scrolled up through the picture and thought, oh, that's quite nice. That's nice, one of the, of the UK landscape. And then it's a bit higher. This is the cloud layer. And then I got up to the aircraft site and thinking, oh, yeah, I can see quite a bit of England. And then the next sort of 20 or 30 pictures as it started to move, what basically looks like near space, being able to see the curvature of the Earth, the blackness of space, and the thin blue line in which we live and breathe. That is our atmosphere. With the help of a 50-pound point-and-shoot camera bought from eBay, a few blocks of loft insulation foam and a roll of duct tape, Robert's attic has become mission control. After months of planning, DIY cam takes three hours to reach maximum altitude and once the latex balloon has burst, just half an hour to fall back to Earth. The IT expert is currently working on Icarus 3 a little more advanced with its rotating camera but designed to make Robert's world look even more stunning. Mike McCarthy, Sky News, Huddersfield.